I have appreciation for performance packers for the simple fact that you can ride them. You know, that's a big thing, you know. Um, was never really a big wheel bagger fan. I appreciated the work that went into them, but I wanted I wanted something that I could ride. But I didn't want to go full out performance on it. You know, I, there were certain things that I wanted to kind of tie into the bike, but I didn't want, you know, you to look at it and be like, well, it's a performance bagger. And everybody has their own opinions on that anyways. But honestly, my biggest goal with this build was just to build something that I could ride and not have to worry about, you know, reliability, you know, something cool and building it for myself. You know, it, I wasn't, I'm not building it for anybody else. parents told me that I was drawing and coloring on stuff ever since I was a little kid. Every I just remember everywhere that we went on a on a trip, whether it be the grocery store 10 minutes away or we're going on a road trip somewhere, I always had like a clipboard and paper in the back of the car. Uh, I'd always draw every time we go somewhere um, as like a young young kid and then that that just kind of evolved over the years like that's what I wanted to do. I was always in sports and stuff but I, like when I wasn't doing sports, like that's what I was doing. I was always drawing. I draw, my dad was always into hot rods, race cars, bikes and stuff like that. So I'd always draw those. And, you know, it, as I got older into school, I think it kind of evolved a little bit and I learned a little bit. You just kind of learn things and then you kind of just take it all in and it translated over. And then basically um, when I turned roughly like 13, 12, 13 years old, I picked up my first airbrush um, and then kind of just kicked off from there. My name is Austin Pawn, owner and operator of Pawn Designs. I do custom paint, well, custom paint, literally anything. I'm mainly known for my uh, my helmets. I do a little bit of bike stuff, a little bit of logo work. If it can be painted, I'll paint it. Growing up, I was always told like I was an artist, like, oh, you're gonna go somewhere. I'm like, ah, I don't know, like. I um, didn't really know what I was gonna do. And then um, back like Miami Ink era, you know, the tattoos were kind of getting popular and whatnot. My grandpa was, he was an old Navy guy covered in tattoos. We had a pretty good relationship and he kind of inspired me to get tattooed. So it kind of, tattoos kind of went into, I was already kind of airbrushing and stuff like that. It's like I said, age 13. And I actually want to be, be, a, be a tattoo artist. So I started getting tattooed when I was around 16. Went in with my, my dad and grandpa, um, got my first tattoo. And, you know, I kind of just kept getting tattooed. I, I remember the second tattoo I got, I kind of told the tattoo artist, like, hey, I, I think I want to become a tattoo artist. And he's like, uh, you got like, you know, pictures or whatever, like, or, you know, of your stuff as far as like, sketches or whatever. And I, I brought some in. I think he's pretty impressed. And he's like, man, when you graduate, you know, it's, uh, you can, you can be an apprentice here and we'll, you know, we'll sign a contract or whatever and you can come work for me. So from freshman year of high school on, I knew I was going to be a tattoo artist or I thought it was going to be a tattoo artist. 
come find out I'm, you know, I, that's basically in between there is when I, you know, start airbrushing and, and even pinstriping like bondage pinstripe and stuff like that, because I still was really into the hot rods and, and motorcycles and things like that. So, but both those kind of come hand in hand. So I graduated high school and went and, you know, was basically an apprentice right out of high school at a tattoo shop. One thing led to another, didn't really work out the way I wanted to, ended up uh, stop tattooing. And then that led me into, well, for the last four years, I kind of knew what I was going to do. And now I'm like, kind of, you know, have no clue what I'm going to do now. So that, that kind of forced me to get a job until I figured out what I was going to do and um, to flip pizzas at a local gas station and did that for a minute. And then uh, actually a couple, a couple came in and they, they knew that I was pretty artistic and they were gonna open up like a screen print shop. And they asked if I'd be interested in going and working for them. So I did that for a short period. And it just got to the point where I was like, man, I need to put my, you know, artistic talent, you know, out there. And I, you know, I just felt like I was kind of wasting it at, at that point because I never really designed anything at the screen print place. It was more or less just like, uh, pulling screens at that point, you know, and uh, at the time I started racing go-karts and, you know, I decided I was going to paint my own helmet growing up, kind of backtracking my dad growing up. That's what he did. So my dad was a custom painter, me growing up as a kid. And, uh, you know, he did anything from helmets and motorcycles, but that was a, that was a part-time job for him. So it was kind of his idea, like, you're, you're racing go-karts. Why don't you, you know, maybe paint your helmet and, you know, you we could set up somewhere and, you, you know, cause it's, I got to a point where going back to my grandpa, you know, you know, tattooed and all that stuff. Like I look at him as like a second dad and he had his own business. I'm like, well, if grandpa has his own business, you know, it was completely different. It wasn't custom paint or nothing, but why can't I have it? And it's like, dad's like, well, why don't we just focus on like the helmets? You can ship those helmets anywhere. You know, and um, it got to a point where not only was I racing go-karts, but I set up at other go, you know, if I wasn't racing, I was going to a race and setting up and uh, mainly go-karting events. And that's kind of how I got started. I set up with a tent, like three or four helmets and business cards and pictures of, you know, other stuff. And next thing you know, I'm going to, you know, there's a really big um, go-kart race in uh, Newcastle, Indiana, and they have like national events there. And um, next thing you know, I'm setting up and there's, you know, I get customers from Canada wanting to get some stuff done. I'm freaking out like Canada, you know? And um, so I come home with like three or four jobs right off the bat. I'm like, sweet, I got like four helmets to do. And then it's like, you do those four and in the process, you're still kind of like trying to advertise a little bit and uh, going to other shows, like other races and whatnot. Next thing you know, I'm slammed. I'm slammed with, you know, with work. I guess it was after like the whole screen print thing, um, the tattoo thing not working out, then going into the screen print, I kind of felt like I was just going at the motions at that point. And I was 19 years old when I started my business. And it was kind of one of those things like, what do I have to lose? Growing up um, as a kid, I don't, I just young. Uh, I just remember my dad always taking me to car shows, and um, he between car shows and racetracks. That's you know, and uh, that's where we always went. And he kind of, you know, I kind of just tagged along wherever he was, wherever he was going. And so not only was I already like artistic, and like my parents kind of knew I was artistic, but you go to these car shows as a kid and you see these, 
you know, the hot rods with the nice paint jobs and stuff like that. Or you go to the racetrack and you see the helmets and, and all the race car graphics and stuff like that. I think just growing up around it and um, especially with my dad, you know, doing his his stuff in, in the garage, is, you know, um, I think it all kind of came together. I mean, if you if in my opinion, hot rods and racing, I, I think they kind of do go together. You know what I mean? Um, so it wasn't until I think when I started getting into the helmets, it was more of less like I transitioned to like, you know, yeah, like hot rod, like pinstriping, flames, you know, metal flakes, stuff like that to now you're going to racetracks and majority of your work is race related. And once you start doing so much of a certain thing, you know, whether it be helmets or whatever, it kind of evolves into let's try to make stuff look like it's going fast just sitting still you know what i mean and that was always been my goal not only like making my helmets look fast but making them have a lot of depth over the years the more and more you did the more and more i kind of oh i like that or i like this i'm gonna start doing more of that you know it's a lot of trial and error when you first start and then once you get like a bank of like different ideas you kind of just build off those those ideas and you kind of that's i feel like that's how i kind of started my own little style. My dad, he grew up, or my, I should say, my uncle, my dad's brother, always had a bike um and unfortunately he got killed in a bike accident at a young age my grandma um never wanted my dad to have a bike and uh he ended up getting one i think it was like a honda magna or something like that back in the day and um then took a break once you know married my mom had me and my you know sister and then we got to a certain age where he was kind of ready to jump back into a harley and um i think it was around early 2000s ish back when like motorcycle mania jesse james kind of era and uh he bought a a 90 uh soft tail springer and he that thing was pretty cool um but then after he was done with it it was real cool he did a lot of a lot of custom paint work to that and that was like when he was hot and heavy in the custom paint so he he stripped the whole thing down to bare frame. He even painted the motor. Like, I don't know if anybody's painting motors nowadays. I know I'll paint sticks to them, honestly. Like, um, he painted the motor. He painted all the hand controls. Like, anything that could be painted, he painted. And if it wasn't painted, it was polished. And it had, like, the, uh, like, I don't know if it was actually Dave Pirowitz, but, like, that store, or, like, I think Arlen Ness had a tail dragger fender that kind of wrapped around a little bit. Uh, it was like a candy apple green with metal flake flames, pinstriped and like red. It looked badass. It was like the opposite of Jesse James's uh, the one bike with the chrome frame and all that stuff. That was kind of the inspiration behind it. And uh, growing up as a kid, and your dad has that. You know, it's like, dude, this is this is badass. It's almost like a like a light. Like I was always I was always into Harleys and stuff like that as a kid, but never like really into them until dad you know, brought that home, started doing it. I'm like, wow, this is freaking sweet. And obviously, you know, watching Motorcycle Mania had a big, big role in that. Like, I feel like everybody's like, at least mine at the time, like Jesse James was like my idol, you know what I mean? And um, so that had a big role in getting into Harleys too. So my grandfather that we talked about earlier, he, he got a Harley too. So between my dad and my grandpa, they both were riding as a kid. I turned 18. I was like, I need to get a, I need to get a Harley. So I came up here to Cursing Cycle Center, bought my first Harley, went and talked to my, uh, talked to Jason and uh, said, I want a Sportster. What's your cheapest Sportster? He said, what, what you gotta, what you gotta, what do you wanna, you know, use Sportster for? I got this, and he's like, well, what do you really want? I'm like, I'm, I'm eyeballing that Nightster over there. And, um, so long story short, he must be a real good salesman because he talked me in right into that Nightster. I think it was like 0% in interest or something like that. So that'd be stupid not to do that. But uh, so I ended up with a Nightster. Um, 
And, you know, that's, that's where I got my first Harley. And, and it was, you know, I kind of did some little stuff to that and kind of went from there. So I had my um, Sportster. I bought the Nicer from Jason. Rode that around for three or four years. Um, paid it off and decided I was kind of wanting to get something a little bit bigger. And uh, so that's when I went, came back in, bought my soft tail. Um, it's actually how I met my wife. And Jason was like, you're going to paint the thing? I'm like, well, probably, you know, like, well, why don't you buy that one instead of this one? I said, okay, it's a soft tail deluxe, 13 soft tail deluxe. And um, after riding that for probably, I don't know, a year and a half, two years, maybe, I decided I was going to tear it down, paint it, powder coat the motor, you know, you name it. Nothing super crazy, but just change a bunch of stuff. So I basically um, started the process of building my first bike ever, um, you know, with the help of my dad and my buddy Jared. Um, you know, we kind of tore it down, you know, got the motor all disassembled and stuff like that, sent that off to powder coat, took the chrome that was on it, powder coated that black, um, just because I didn't really want too much chrome. Um, and then as far as the paint went, I kind of, I'm a sucker for browns and stuff like that, uh, as most people might have known or, you know, might know or will know after this video, um, earth tone type stuff. But I also loved orange and, and things like that. So I was kind of like going back and forth, especially it's my personal bike. I'm like super stressing out on what I'm going to do. And um, I kind of wanted to tie in a little bit of like tattoo art in there too. So like on the front fender it has like a Hanya mask, um, like Japanese Hanya mask with some, you know, like floating like necklace type thing. And then the back it has like an owl, like leading into like a skull. It's super random, but I wanted that. And then on the sides, it's actually um, my wife's um, portrait with like a headdress. I always like, like, I, I kind of like the like the Native American like headdress with the chicks and stuff like that. So I thought that'd be cool, like like a little bit of a like a tank piece on each side. One side's like a tiger, the other side's like a wolf wolf head, and um, it's kind of just like evolved into this pretty cool paint job. And and by the time I was done between painting it and powder coating it. Um, it was like a really big process and I was juggling building that bike um, or like customizing it as you will, uh, along with a, a custom, uh, doing my full-time job. And it, it was just like anything, you try to do something for yourself, it never gets done, kind of put it on, you know, the back burner or whatever. Finally got it done. And um, it was just like one of those things you sit back and you like look at it and it's like, yeah, that's, it's pretty awesome. I felt like I was, kind of like taking after my dad's footsteps when he built his bike, but I still feel like his was a little bit over the top. You know, he did the frame and everything. I just did the tens and, uh, you know, powder coated motor, you know, versus painting it. And, um, but it was, it kind of like got me, like, I'm, I want to, I want to, you know, do another bike someday. I didn't know when it was, what it was going to be, whatever. So after riding the soft tail and, um, realizing that I wanted to kind of go on some longer trips and stuff like that. I decided I wanted to get a bagger, but at the time I didn't really have the extra money to like get a brand new road glide or street glide or something. Um, I ended up buying like an 07 ultra and ripping that thing out to, to Sturgis. That was my big like first road trip. Um, such a good experience just getting on the open road and riding. Um, but it was ugly. It was like an old grandpa bike, you know, and uh, my goal was to eventually get a newer, you know, after you start riding, you see these baggers and stuff. I'm like, man, those road glides just look super mean going down the road. And after you see so many, like I made my decision that the next bike that I get is gonna be a road glide. Like that's simple as that. <laughs> I have appreciation for, for performance baggers for the simple fact that you can ride them. You know, that's a big thing, you know. Um, was never really a big wheel bagger fan. 
Um, I appreciated the work that went into them, but I wanted, I wanted something that I could ride. Um, and, but I didn't want to go full out performance on it. You know, I, there were certain things that I wanted to kind of tie into the bike, but I didn't want, you know, you to look at it and be like, well, it's a performance bagger. And everybody has their own opinions on that anyways. But, um, honestly, my biggest goal with this build was just to build something that I could ride and not have to worry about, you know, reliability, um, you know, something cool and uh, building it for myself. You know, it, I wasn't, I'm not building it for anybody else but me. I'm a, I'm a custom painter, so I can't just keep this thing black. So then, you know, I took it out to Sturgis that year, uh, rode it with my tour pack and all that stuff. At that point, it's just a stock bike still, essentially with the pipes and stuff. And um, rode it for the rest of that year, brought it home, tore it down. And all I knew is that I wanted to custom, you know, I wanted to paint it, do something similar to like the soft tail, you know, do the motor up, you know, get that a different color. And um, then it, and then it like kind of dawned on me, like Jimmy, Jimmy Light and I are, pretty close and, and those guys at HPI it's like I'd be dumb not to let them do their thing to the bike um but if I was going to do that I need to get rid of these bags you know so I, that's when I switched to the the stock just straight you know stock bags um two into one and then I still didn't really have an idea what I want to do for paint and so I tore it down and that's when I kind of brainstormed and like it it just sat for like a year and I like just kind of thought about what I wanted. Still didn't know, kind of got on my iPad, kind of did some sketches and stuff. I knew that, you know, after, after you know, seeing what was going on with the performance bagger scene, stuff like that, um, there was a lot of like, it was almost like the panel jobs, the panel paint jobs on Dinas and stuff like that, even some bagger stuffs kind of like slowly transitioned into the race style graphic. And, um, you know, in between then I painted some bikes and this, you know, race style graphic, one being Jimmy's uh, Road King, the purple bike. Um, I painted his FXR um, and I painted some some stuff in between and kind of had a race style graphic because that's what I do, you know, it's kind of like my, that's my jam. And um, I knew that I didn't want to go that route. I didn't want to like steer away from it too much to where it was like, what are you doing, dude? Like, you know, but, um, I knew I wanted something different, but still have my flair on it. So I kind of was like sketching some stuff out. I knew that I had like, honestly, looking back, I don't want to say it's like the biggest inspiration for the bike because it really isn't. But after looking at it, it almost reminds you of like those, uh, really expensive like mobile homes that have like that swooping like graphic that kind of just like does the whole movement. I knew I wanted some sort of movement through the bike versus just doing kind of like straight edge, come down, angle back, you know. I wanted something to kind of be a little bit different. Um but like I said, not too different, you know. And so once I got a sketch kind of dialed in, um colors. What kind of colors? Well, like I said, I'm a sucker for brown, any earth tone color um, that's me. I don't get to do them on helmets as much cause it's not really flashy. Um, but I think for a long time, like anything that was my, my personal, whether it be a helmet or anything that I'm paying for myself, other than like a race helmet when I was racing go-karts, um, I feel like it had brown, um, you know, anything on that, you know, line of, you know, tan, stuff like that. And so then I came across this color um, that was very earth tony, but not too it not too earth tone, if that makes any sense. And it was um, it's called Millennium Jade Green, and uh, it's a GTR color. And um, so that's where I got the idea. My buddy Frank from Australia, he's also an Allen painter. Uh, he showed me this color. He's like, dude, this is up your alley. And I'm like, dude, what is that? And I knew right then and there, okay, first color is Millennium Jig. 
and that's what I'm doing. And that's what I had in my mindset. So I had that color. It's kind of like a charcoal, as you guys would see in the video and the pictures. It's like a charcoal mixed with like a little bit of a green, and but it still has like kind of like the green vibe. And um, okay, what's another color am I gonna use? Well, I like creams. I wanted like something like not quite white, but not yellow. I kind of wanted like this off whitish cream color, something that's gonna pop well. Um, Porsche makes this ivory, like medium ivory color. Um, and that was a big inspiration for that color. Um, it's kind of like an off-white cream color. And then can't leave out brown. So uh, I added the uh, the brown and, that, and it's a, uh, it's like a metallic bronze pearl um, from Diamond back here. Um, it's, it's a BASF color. Um, but uh, so yeah, and then um, I love orange too. As far as like a brighter color, I would say orange is probably my favorite color. Um, so I, I felt like that would have been a nice, another little pop color. Um, so once I kind of got the design dialed in and stuff like that, and it's like, okay, what are you gonna powder coat? What color? Um, you know, I went with like the brown, kind of burnt bronzish color, more on the brown side than bronze, but um, you know, the wheels and the bars and stuff like that. And I got to the motor, I'm like, man, I've seen some burnt bronze motors. I don't want my motor to be burnt bronze. Um, so I thought, you know, it's kind of a ballsy move, but let's do it like a desert khaki with like a little hint of like a green to it in a way. And um, I just love how it turned out. I was kind of like one of those things you kind of have like this vision of what you think it'll look like and, and you think it'll look good, but until it's like actually done, um, that is kind of, you know, a ballsy move, but I'm glad that I did it. You know, it's a little bit different. Um, and then I wanted to add a little bit of the orange pop, you know, with, with the rotors and uh, the push rod tube, it'll, you know, deals. And um, yeah, it was just like, I wanted to throw a little bit of orange just to make it pop just a little bit. I didn't want it to get too lost with just like all the earth tone colors and stuff like that. I need some sort of pop to it. So start out with the motor, you know, um, me and Jimmy at HPI and, and, and the Horsepower Incorporated uh, guys, we got a pretty good relationship. They're local, you know, um, here in Indiana. And um, so I knew I wanted Jimmy to do all that, but I told him, I was like, dude, I don't need anything super crazy. Um, I'm, not, I'm not out there drag racing anybody or anything, you know? So uh, I said something that, you know, it's gonna sound good, maybe has a little lope to it, but also just rides great and um so he threw uh he threw his cam in it um throttle body his air cleaner and um their pipe and um yeah it's nothing crazy but it, it has enough power for me i think he said um 127 foot pounds of torque and uh 120 horsepower so that's a big jump from stock um but it's plenty enough for me it's it's nothing that i'm gonna go out in there and and brag and try to drag race somebody but um, plenty, plenty of power and, and it's perfect. It sounds great. It, to me, I'm kind of biased, but I honestly think it's the best pipe out there. And just all their parts in general is, uh, it's quality, quality work. It's all made. It's all made there at, uh, an indie at, at the shop there. And, um, yeah, they're just a good group of dudes. Um, so after that, um, another good, another good dude, uh, I can't say enough about is Brian Clock. Um, I met him a few years ago, and uh, anybody knows Brian, they know he's just a just a good dude. Um, I met him, and and he really helped me out. And um, I'm running his front fender, uh, his tank dash, front windshield, and the windshield kind of bracing in the front, the uh, the axle covers, the front axle, uh, the flush mount and stuff, and. Um, yeah, it's um, so I, I'm rocking that. Um, as far as footboards go, San Diego Customs, um, Chip, Chip and the boys over there. Um, I'm getting some rear ones. I haven't; those haven't come in yet. But I, I'm running their their footboards, um, thrashing supply, um, brake pedal, and um, shift linkage, and are uh, the uh, the pedals and their bars and grips. Um, and then 
I am running Fox suspension front and rear. My machinist risers and uh, gauge cluster. Um, Dakota Digital, um, all, the, all the gauges and stuff like that are Dakota Digital. So my seat is done by uh, Bucks Customs. Uh, he's out of Pennsylvania, does killer work. Um, that was kind of one of the things too that I didn't really want. I didn't want like, not saying that the saddlemen don't look good or anything like that. I just kind of another one of those things. I wanted something a little bit different. So um, I kind of found Bucks on online, kind of talked to him. Uh, super cool dude. Uh, talked about basically what I wanted, kind of the vibe I was going for. And I literally sent, um, I sent my, my seat out to him. He redid it, talked about the leather and he even sent me a bunch of samples and things like that. I wanted a little bit of suede in there, um, added some suede. And then uh, he even lasered my, my Poland Designs logo on the back, um, which is a nice little touch, maybe a little custom. <laughs> thank all you guys for tuning in and um yeah if you ever need anything custom painted um logo work done anything like that uh you can reach out uh via email um you know instagram facebook all pull designs yeah appreciate everything and uh hope you guys enjoy it Thank you for tuning in and uh just want to say one one last thing ben over here is uh one talented guy he uh traveled all the way from tennessee to uh bfe indiana to uh, come hang out with me all day let me work a little bit and uh you know sweat his sweat his butt off in the 90 degree weather and uh, yeah just appreciate you coming in and, and doing what you do um very talented and uh, if you guys are ever into, uh, I mean, if you guys are tuning in now, you've already know what kind of work he does. Um, but the uh, content that he puts out with the bikes and videos and photos and all that stuff, it's, uh, it's amazing. So thank you very much.